333 years ago, Isaac Newton did something extraordinary. He looked at the heavens and he looked at an apple falling from a tree. And he realized it's the same thing. But here is a direct quote from Newton in Principia. For what this gravity thing is, as for why it does this, I've got absolutely no idea. Who knows? Newton perfectly described what gravity does, but he has no idea what gravity is. And then there's the most important distinction that nobody taught you. Today, we're talking about why science has been describing the world with increasing precision for 400 years plus, but has never explained anything, not a single thing. And once you see this, you cannot unsee it, guys. So let's get into it. We've been told that science explains the world, that empirical measurements and mathematics reveal the fundamental nature of reality, that if we just measure things precisely enough, we understand what things actually are. Well, it's not true. Science is in the business of prediction. Science is in the business of describing behavior. Science does not explain what things are. It never has, and it probably never can do. And here's why this matters. You experience this world right now through qualities, colors, textures, the taste of whatever you last ate, and the feeling of the ground beneath your feet. This is a direct experience. This is primary. This is what is actually happening to you. But then we did something. A few hundred thousand years ago, we invented quantities, numbers, measurements, and we discovered something magical. Quantities are incredibly useful for predicting what happens next. They're useful for building rockets and bridges and sending data across the world. So here's the trap we fell into. We confuse useful for prediction with reveals what things actually are. A physicist can tell you that a blue light has a wavelength of 450 nanometers. That's a perfect description, a number, a measurement, a quantity. But here's the question. Why does 450 nanometers create the experience of blue? Why does it look like that specific color in the mind? And why is there something like blue to see at all rather than nothing? Science has no answer, and not because science is young and will eventually figure it out, but because the quantities literally cannot explain qualities. They're different categories. You cannot derive an experience from a number no matter how precise the number gets. This is called the hard problem of consciousness. And materialism, the belief that only measurable material physical stuff exists, has no solution for it. Zero. Let me show you history up till now in four stages. Stage one, Newton's gravity. Newton said there's an invisible force it acts at a distance instantaneously and it pulls things together. This story about magical forces predicted planetary motion perfectly. We literally put a man on the moon with it. Here's the key. Newton's story about gravity wasn't true. Gravity doesn't actually work that way, but his story was useful. The story allowed prediction. Stage two. Einstein's gravity. Then this lad called Einstein came along and said, actually, forget that invisible force nonsense. What's really happening is that matter bends space-time itself. It's geometry, the curvature of space and time. And suddenly we had a new convenient fiction, a better map. Einstein didn't explain what gravity is any more than Newton did but his map was more useful, more precise. We had a new story to tell ourselves. Stage three, quantum gravity. Then quantum scientists started looking really close at tiny things. And they said, wait, gravity isn't a force. It's not a geometry. It's, 
it's an emergent phenomenon coming from microscopic quantum patterns. Another convenient fiction, another story. Stage four, the field. Here's where it gets really interesting. When physicists looked even more closely, they realized that particles aren't things at all. They're ripples, excitations, something the quantum field does and then stops doing. So now we say there's a quantum field, it vibrates. When it vibrates, we call those vibrations particles. But the particles aren't real things, they are events. Only the field is real. Here's the pattern. Each convenient fiction is better than the last. Each one predicts reality more precisely and each one helps us navigate the world. But they're all stories, maps, useful descriptions of behavior. And we still don't know what gravity really is. We went from magic force to bent geometry to emergent property to field excitation. We never reached what gravity actually is because science doesn't work that way. Science was never designed to answer that question. Let me attempt to be very clear about what science is because this is usually where the confusion starts. Science is three things. One, observation. Two, modeling. You create a model of the world, a story, a convenient fiction. Three, prediction. You use your model to predict what you'll observe next. If your model is good, your predictions come true. If they don't come true, you go back and create a better story. And here's what science is not. Science is not in the business of finding out what things fundamentally are. That's not what the method does. The method can't do that because the method only deals with what you can observe and what you can measure. And what you can observe and what you can measure are quantities, numbers, measurements, behaviors. But what something is, is not a quantity. What something is, is a quality, an essence, a nature. A physicist can tell you everything about how an electron behaves, its charge, its mass, its spin, its probability distribution. But ask a physicist, what's an electron made of? They'll tell you, mm, I don't know, it's defined by how it behaves. In other words, I don't know what it is, I only know what it does. This is not a failure of physics. Physics is doing exactly what it was designed to do. The failure is cultural. We've confused describes behavior with explains nature. And that confusion has led us to believe things that are actually nonsensical. Here's a fascinating historical fact that nobody talks about. Materialism wasn't discovered, it was invented as a political strategy. 500 years ago, the church had absolute power in Europe and belief was enforced violently. In 1600, Italian scientists named Giordano Bruno refused to recant his ideas and the church burned him at the stake. So the early scientists faced a choice, pursue truth and get burned, or find a way to do science without threatening the church. The solution, carve out a separate realm. We'll study the physical realm, said the scientists. Just matter and motion, nothing about God, soul, spirit or consciousness. That's your territory, guys. We're not gonna touch it. Please don't burn us at the stake and then everyone's happy. This was a genius political strategy. They could carry on advancing certain sciences, but not get killed. And Descartes formalized this. He separated the world into two parts, the physical, matter, and the mental, soul. Scientists study matter. Priests study the soul. No conflict. And for a couple of hundred years, this worked perfectly. It was a tool, it was a useful separation, a political move. But here's what happened. By the 1800s, people forgot that it was a story. 
They forgot that it was a strategy and they started believing it. The founders of enlightenment, people like Descartes, they knew materialism was a convenient fiction. They knew that it was a tool, a strategy. But by the time you get to Nietzsche in the 1900s, people actually believed it. They thought materialism was true, that matter was the fundamental reality, that consciousness was somehow an accident, a byproduct, an epiphenomenon. Here's the distinction that nobody teaches you. Qualities are the things themselves, colors, texture, the taste of coffee, the feeling of warmth. These are what's actually given to you. This is what you experience directly. Quantities are descriptions of qualities. When I measure the water bottle and say it's 45 centimeters long, I'm describing my experience of seeing the bottle. I'm translating a quality into a number. We decided that what's real is what you can measure, that numbers are more fundamental than experience, that the description is more primary than the thing described. It's like standing on the top of a mountain, creating a map, and then deciding that this map is more real than the mountain that you're standing on. Here's what materialism actually says. Everything that's real is what we can measure. Everything else is an illusion. Your direct experience of red, that's not real. That's just what your brain does. The real thing is the wavelength, the number, the quantity. But think about what you're saying when you say that. You're saying that your direct experience, the only thing that you actually have access to, is less real than the measurement of it. You're saying that the map is more real than the mountain. You're upside down. So why does this matter? Why should you care whether science describes or explains? Because it changes everything about how you understand yourself. Right now, the dominant worldview tells you that you're an accident, a configuration of matter. Consciousness is just what happens since atoms bump into each other, colliding ever since the Big Bang. And when your body dies, it all ends. That's everything. Everything you are, everything you feel, everything that matters, it ends right there. You don't really matter. You're just rearranged stardust, experiencing a temporary illusion of meaning. That's materialism's promise. But here's the truth it's hiding. Materialism can't explain your existence. It can't explain why you feel like something to be you. It can't explain the one thing that you know for certain, that you exist, that this experience is happening right now. Materialism just asserts, well, it must be the atoms. But atoms can't experience anything. Atoms don't have the quality of redness. They have the quantity of a wavelength. They're completely different categories. You cannot reduce a quality to a quantity, and you cannot reduce the experience of red to a number, no matter how precise that is. So materialism doesn't actually explain anything to you, it just asserts you away. It says, you're not real, you're just what atoms look like. But you're the only thing that's undeniably real. And the implications are profound. Your experience is not derived from matter. Your consciousness is not an accident and your inner life is not less real than a measurement can capture. You're not explained by science. You are the standard by which science is judged. So if science doesn't explain, if it just creates useful maps that reveal territories, what is actually going on? Here's the real question that nobody in the scientific establishment would like to ask. If all science is just convenient fiction, if every model eventually gets replaced by a better one, if we're just creating increasingly useful stories about how things behave, then what are the facts? What are the measurements describing? What is the map of? Science assumes that there's a territory. It assumes that nature has some consistent pattern underneath all of the descriptions, and that's why the predictions work. That's why the map successfully predicts the terrain. But science officially says, I have no idea what the territory is, 
I just know how to describe it. And that's honest. That's the integrity that Newton had. But it leaves us with a question. What is that territory? What is the underlying reality that all these convenient fictions are describing? If you're willing to see that science describes rather than explains, you're ready for the next question. That question will change how you understand your consciousness, how you understand your place in this universe, how you understand what's actually real. So here's what I want you to take away from this. Science is not your enemy, it is incredible. The ability to predict and navigate reality with precision is one of humanity's greatest achievements. But don't confuse the map with the mountain. Don't confuse the description with the explanation. Don't let the cultural narrative convince you that your direct experience is less real than somebody else's measurement of it. You are not explained by science. You are the standard against which all explanations are measured. If materialism can't explain you, and it can't, then maybe, just maybe, the map is upside down and maybe it's time to turn it over. If you want to go deeper into what's actually going on, what reality might actually be if science is just describing surfaces, then you're going to want to watch the next video. I'll link it in the description when it's out and subscribe so you don't miss it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Much love everybody.